Welcome back to Adri's farmhouse kitchen. Today we are going to can three recipes. So the first one we are going to do, we're going to do roasted salsa verde, number two cacciatore sime sauce and the third one it's tomato juice. So we're going to the garden, to the polytunnel, we're gonna harvest the ingredients, what's mainly tomatillo and tomatoes, and we are going to can today. I am using the all new ball book, canning and preserving, and my recipes are, so we are going to start with the roasted salsa verde, and we're going to put that in the oven, roasting while we are dealing with the tomatoes, wash it, you know, chop it, and so on. My number two, so that's roasted salsa verde is on a 167, page 167. The cacciatore sire sauce is 187, and we're going to can some tomato juice, what's on page 202. So that's the plan for today. Let's see if we can achieve it. See you in a polytunnel. It has been a long day. I have picked the tomatoes and the tomatillo prior, a day prior to the big, big day. And uh, I am starting on the tomatillos first. I have decided to pick the tomatoes, even the ones what not ripe, they will ripe. All these tomatoes will ripen a windowsill for me inside the conservatory. I have decided to do it because we've just had another frost last night. A touch of frost inside the tunnel, it was one degree Celsius, so it wasn't frost, but it was very close. So, what I'm gonna do, I am going to just take everything what I can again, friends. And then we're gonna have another process in there head. So I am picking the tomatoes now. I am picking all of the tomatoes, even the ones what not quite ready. When it started blushing, I am picking it and we are just leave it on a kitchen windowsill or in a conservatory windowsill and that will ripen for us beautifully. I have managed to pick actually the rind right amount for this uh, canning day. I don't know, probably experienced now, but most of the time I manage to pick these things just right. So, you know, that's exactly the kilo what my recipe requires. So I think that's just quite funny. So yeah, we managed to pick quite a lot. So I need to go and get a few more baskets and we're going to fill all of them. So after I pick all the tomatoes, I'll pick the tomatillos and uh, the next day is the big day. So next day, it's the day when we are canning all three projects. And to be honest, it's going to be a fun day. But towards the end of the day, I was getting so tired because I always plan so much for myself, you know, because um, I am so busy lately and so I just try to really do the best and I try to harvest and obviously preserve as much as possible and recording this now it's been okay but now actually I'm making the voiceover uh, we had frost so we st I still managed to save the tunnel but we had minus three degrees celsius but the tunnel, as you can see, it's still so many of these green tomatoes on it. And uh, I'm not picking it only if it's just started blushing, you know, just turning, just started ripening. Because that way it's very easy and very quickly will turn and ripen inside in a house. But if it's green, I, I would rather leave it. But we'll just see the next couple of days what we're going to do, obviously, because if it's Frost gonna come daily and day and night. It's just you know just something we have to sacrifice. But yeah, 
After I've picked all the tomatoes and the tomatillos, I'm on the third job for the third kitchen project for tomorrow. What is the tomato juice? And that's, that's a very good way I've learned over the years to use up all the cherry tomatoes. Obviously, you don't eat a lot of cherry tomatoes, you know. So And then, as you can see in this greenhouse, I've got so many and they're so productive and produce loads. The best way is to make tomato juice with it. They are juicy, they got amazing flavor, especially when I mix all these different varieties. So it's perfect. Okay, so we've harvested this much tomatillos. What well, is an amazing harvest for my climate. And for the first time, we've got quite a few decent size in there. Quite heavy this basket. I'm not sure how many kilograms we've got. Our recipe needs two kilograms. But I think we're going to double the recipe, so I'm going to probably measure out 8 pounds, uh, 4 kilograms of tomatillo. We're going to need onion, jalapeno, garlic, lime juice and fresh cilantro, coriander. First time I had to buy from the shop because Mine's being eaten by the slugs, so we've got some coriander, coriander or cilantro leaves. We're gonna need salt and black pepper. So I'm going to get the ingredients ready. I'm going to peel this out of the husk. So I'm just literally gonna peel it like that, twist it, compost when it's next to me, and actually I'm going to go and wash it because it's quite sticky so we're going to wash it and then probably half it on a roasting roasting tray and we're going to roast it in my agar roasting oven reckon about 45 minutes the tomatillo is ready as i said when that husk what grows around it fills up and it opens it absolutely love tomatillo salsa verde chicken it's amazing roasted honestly that's when the best flavor comes out same with tomatoes so we're going to roast our tomatoes as well for definitely for the one of the recipe and we'll see how it goes how much time we've got because it's nearly one o'clock i am a little bit behind I have gathered all the ingredients and I am doubling the recipe because I've got more than four kilo. I've got about five kilograms of tomatillo. I leave one kilogram to cook with and I'm going to use up the four kilogram. So I'm going to take the husks off it, wash it, chop it and roast it. We are going to use half a cup of cilantro leaves, 12 cloves of garlic. These are giant garlic bulbs, so if I haven't got enough, I use garlic powder. I've also got four onions. I've got some freeze-dried onions as well I would like to use up. I've got, I'm gonna have two teaspoons of salt, sorry, double it, four teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of ground black peppercorn, four jalapeno and a cup of lime juice i think that's that's all so i washed all the tomatillos washed obviously we removed the husks so we're ready to chop them up i uh, if it's a really large one i go half and half so i quarter them most of it they usually just i've just half it and then i'm just gonna put it on a roasting tray with parchment pa paper layered on the tray and goes to the roasting oven until it gets just a little bit you know to start browning and it turns this tomatillo an absolutely amazing flavor honestly the best way to deal with the tomatillo it's roasted i love it okay i've got half of the ingredients so like the ingredients for one batch all in this one tray. I'm 
just going to put just a little bit of oil. I'm gonna massage and that can now go into the roasting oven. And in about 20-25 minutes we're going to check on it. Okay, the tomatillo now it's done. It's been out from the oven for about half an hour, so it's slightly cooled down. Now I can transfer it over to my food processor and give it a good chop up, you know, for consistency, kind of like a liquidy. The, all of the coriander, cilantro now, to the blender. And I'm just going to ladle, if I can, these tomatillos and give them a good chop. We want them tiny bits. The other tray is now nearly done in the oven. My jars are nearly ready in a dishwasher. So soon we're going to blend this in a blender. We just add a few more bits and bobs and we are ready to put this in a canner. So just blitz it now, literally takes a few seconds. I'm keep checking on it, make sure I'm happy with the consistency. But usually, you know, just a little like kind of this kind of te texture I'm going to show you in a sec. And it's just perfect for me. The jars just came out of the dishwasher. They are nice and warm. And now I'm just going to add a few more bits and bobs to this <coughs> sauce. teaspoons of pink Himalayan salt and two teaspoons of ground black peppercorn and a cup of lime juice and that's a very good mix and we can fill the jars I'm using two part lid, nice and clean, all washed, sterilized, clean jars, warm product to warm jar, leaving about an inch headspace, and I'm going to water bath can of this for half an hour. I am so sorry about the sound quality, but my camera just started to playing up. So, where I can, I am doing voiceover, but I had to put these few clips in because I give so much information and I think they are useful, so I apologize for that and uh, I'm working on it to fix it. But we are now ready to put the roasted salsa verde to a water bath canner. It made fourth, four quart jars for us and it honestly tastes delicious it's we still had a little bit of leftover what i've already made for dinner and i am so happy how it turned out flavor texture fantastic i am really happy with it so i know how much i'm going to enjoy this over the winter months over rice risotto chicken beef lamb anything honestly it's just such a lovely summer flavor for us i started growing tomatillo Couple of couple of years ago now, and uh, first I thought, oh, I'm not gonna able to grow it in our English climate. But you know what? In a polytunnel, just like a tomatoes, I can, and I am over the moon with it. And just like that, we are on to our last job uh, to make the tomato juice. This part took me absolute forever to take the these little teeny tiny especially the red currant tomatoes of these vines but uh, you know it's all worth it on the end so i'm just uh, take it easy and i'm gonna give them a very good wash and let's go and process it four quarts of roasted salsa per day it's done okay and to my next job the cacciatore sime sauce so i have got six kilograms of tomatoes to start with 
So I'm just going to cut the tomatoes, put them on the roasting tray, and I'm going to put this in the roasting oven for 45 minutes. So if they're medium size or small tomatoes, I am cutting them in half. If it's a larger one, I will cut in them in quarter. I do remove like bad bits, but if it's a stem only or something, I'm not gonna bother because we're going to put this through a strainer to remove all the skin and seed later on. This recipe, I have, I've never done this recipe, and it's got quite a few ingredients. I've already roasted the pepper, onion, and the mushroom. That's already done. But the biggest part is the tomatoes. So I need six kilograms of tomatoes. I'm gonna go through the lot, and then we'll come back with the next step. Look how beautiful these tomatoes are looking. All these lovely varieties, it always amazes me. Just going to put all six kilograms of tomatoes through the strainer. And we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. So we add the pepper, onion and the mushroom, what we've roasted as well. We're gonna add half a cup of red wine, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of dried oregano and half a teaspoon of black peppercorn. I did put one chili as well in here and the garlic, three garlic cloves and the bay leaves. Perfect. So now we're going to put it on the stove and we're going to mix this together. Cacciatore sinna sauce is ready to go to the jars. There is one more ingredient we need to add. We need We need to add citric acid, or I am thinking about actually adding lemon juice. I've got this organic lemon juice, and I'm going to add a tablespoon to each quart jar. If I can find my measuring spoon. The water is now boiling, so I'm going to add a tablespoon. to each jar. I just want to check, make sure that I've got all the ingredients. Tomato dust, onion, red bell pepper, mushroom, wine, salt, thyme, oregano, black pepper, crushed red pepper, garlic, bay leaf. I removed the bay leaf and now we've got the lemon juice. I think we are ready to bottle up. Let's see how many quarts. The recipe says four quarts. We can fill. We need to process this for 40 minutes in our water bath canner. One more bay leaf to remove. It says leave half an inch headspace. And then I've got one more job to do to the lemon juice. Lemon juice. 
I'm going tired. The tomato juice. And I'm using up all these lovely cherry tomatoes, all the different varieties that will make such an amazing tomato juice for us. I'm just going to wipe the rim. Vinegar, kitchen towel. And put the lid on. Regular mouth. Ring. Finger tight. And ready to go to the water bath cannon now for 40 minutes. Make sure that water covers the top of these jars. Okay, and we are on our last job of the tomato juice. And I've never made this variety. I've just checked the recipe and it asks for one large beetroot. So that's gonna be very interesting how that's gonna turn out like. We have got seven kilograms of tomatoes. I'm using cherry tomatoes of all the different varieties from this year. And they're going on the stove while we are dealing with the beetroot. I have had an amazing beetroot harvest. So I'm just going to peel the beetroot, dice it, and I'm going to put this with all the cherry tomatoes and the recipe is only at, so it's asking for seven kilograms of tomatoes, one large beet, one tablespoon salt or celery salt and ask for citric acid or half a cup of buttered lemon juice. So that's what we're gonna do. Peel this beetroot and dice it. One large beet peeled and cut into quarter of an inch half a centimeter cube, so little tiny cubes. And then we've got half an hour left in a water bath canner with our sauce. It has been a productive day again. I'm so glad we've done this. Big preserving job. Dice it. Let's try one. So good, honestly. I've never been a great fan of beetroot, but this variety is just so good. I don't need to cook dinner tonight because last night I've made a lamb joint in an instant pot and it's amazing, it's ready. So literally, we're just gonna have to make some kind of naan bread or something with it to serve. And I think I'm just gonna use some of our ferments as a side. So it wouldn't take me long at all. 10 minutes. And it is now six o'clock. So it's going to be a little bit late dinner, but that's okay. So now all the beet, it's chopped and that can go to the pot with the rest of the cherry tomatoes. It is the next day. I am just finishing off my third project from yesterday. Yesterday to canning the tomato juice. So what I have done, I have reheated tomato juice and that's been simmering behind me on an auger for now about a good hour. So that is now just a little bit reduced. I am going to add a tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt and give it a good mix. Make sure that salt dissolves before we're going to fill these 
very warm jars just came out of the dishwasher and you can hear the water is now rapidly boiling that's definitely ready to receive the jars I'm also putting half a cup of shoot lemon juice just uh, gonna be all over on me <laughs> see that's why it's ideal to wear apron okay and now we're ready to fill the jars it is pure liquid so it's not much chance we're gonna have air bubbles in there I'm filling it up up to leaving half an inch headspace and I washed the lids so they are nice and clean and I am filling mostly quart jars I've got a few smaller bottles as well just in case I just would like to open a small bottle and drink the tomato juice as it is. I've got kitchen towel next to me here and some white vinegar to wipe the rims of these jars. Make sure it's no particle or no juice and give us perfect seal. And fingertip tight, just going to put lids on. And I can go to the canner. My jar lifter. This is a third project now. I'm using the same water bath, water in the water bath canner, and it worked minutes perfect. Has now gone, so I'm ready to take the tomato juice out on this kitchen towel, where I'm going to leave it still for the rest of the day, preferably for overnight until it's cools down completely and then we're going to check the seal, remove the ring, wipe it and label it. We put it on the pantry shelf. Okay, that was a big job. It is a big job done. With all these lovely jars now, they all done. I had amazing seal. I have labeled them all and they are ready to go to the pantry shelf. So yeah, thank you so much for spending time with me today and see you very soon. Bye friends.